spirit Come and fill us with a heart of love with fire Holy Spirit Let us unite as this is our desire Every day and now that passes by We need your presence here Guide us with your powerful hands and keep us out of fear. Holy Spirit, come and fill us with a heart of love with fire. Holy Spirit, let us unite as this is our desire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, today's liturgy gives every one of us the much needed hope. All of us are going through various different types of problems but at this point of time the whole of this world is really going through a depression and people have no clue as to what is going to be the future because of this whole pandemic. And now instead of being a news, it's already knocking our own doors and it is becoming a darker reality every day. As Christians, people with hope, let us have the strength, let us have this hope, let us have this trust in God that he will put an end to this problem. As we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us recall to our minds the times we live without hope. In spite of having hopeful situation, let us get back that trust and hope in the Lord. Let's confess our sins by saying, I confess to Almighty God, brothers, sisters, I have said, all my faults I now declare. Lord, have mercy on us all. Oh, Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy on us all. Blessed Mary, pray for me. Saints and angels, pray for me. Brothers, sisters, pray for me. Pray to the Lord our God for me. Oh Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy on us all. Oh Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy on us all. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to the lasting life. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. Glory be to God on high. Glory be we give you thanks for the glory of the universe. Peace on us to all creation. Peace on us to all God's
Christ the Son of Man, Jesus Christ the Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God, right hand of the Father, Lamb of God, the sacrifice, Lamb of God, who bore our sins. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 10 to 13. Jeremiah said, I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteousness, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evil doers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let your response be. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame has covered my face. To my own kin, I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunts against you fall on me. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. Your response? But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O God with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer, for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion, turn toward me. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. Your response? The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord. Your response? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so, death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was begun. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over those whose sinning was not like the transgressions of Adam, who was a type of the one who was not to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace 
of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will bear witness about me, says the Lord. You also will bear witness. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 10, verses 26 to 33. At that time, Jesus said to his apostles, Have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Jesus Christ, the readings of today are very apt for the times in which we are living. The first reading taken from the book of Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 20, a beautiful words, lines of a human nature, of a human problem, the vulnerabilities of the difficulties that a human being goes through. Jeremiah, straight away, of course, we have read, not the complete chapter. I think uh, we should always read the whole chapter to understand the full meaning. Jeremiah, straight away, starts his lamentation. It's the last part of this lamentation. And of course, you also have uh, the book of lamentation by Jeremiah himself continues. He says, the Lord enticed me, you enticed me, and I'm enticed as well. It's a beautiful song written in Tamil. But it is not as romantic as it appears. It is almost accusing Yahweh. Why did he choose me? You used beautiful words. You told me, don't worry, there won't be anything. No problem, though you're very young, I'll put my words into your mouth. You know what to speak, I'll take care of you. You lured me. They're not, not very nice words, it's a very negative word. He straight away attacks Yahweh saying, why did he choose me? Why did he put, put me into trouble? I trusted you completely. But now you look at the situation in, in which I am living. That's why Jeremiah was called a weeping prophet. He was all the time weeping, struggling. He went through a lot of problems. And why did he bring to this situation? And of course, the readings of today concentrates more on the second part. He also accuses his family, his friends, everyone saying, you people let me down. And he accuses the day of his birth. He accuses the person who brought this news of his birth. Dear friends, somewhere, sometime in our life, we go through this experience of despair, depression. And we say, it's not worth living. And sometimes people who have gone through these hard uh, realities, when they speak for people, some of us, certain privileges are there, 
some of us don't really go through some of these difficulties because I remember my own friend talking to me about a sleepless night when we were back in the seminary and I did not understand what he was even talking. I said, how can you talk about sleepless nights? I feel comfortable to sleep anywhere. During class I can sleep, I will sleep in any time, anywhere and all the more imagine on your bed you can just sleep peacefully. The day I experienced it, I understood what it was, how hard it was to go through. So people are going through a lot of difficulties. And, and today's scenario, the whole globe is at, at loss. You don't understand what this virus is all about. And for some time we were hearing it from China. After some time we heard some news from Italy, then from US. Then they said, okay, it's entering, it has entered India. And now we are affected so badly that we are able to hear that some of our own friends are positive. And people do struggle. And for some of us, lockdown is still a period of time where we can write something, we can reflect something, we can do something uh, very creative. Yes, it's fine. I'm not here to quote Maslow's uh, um, the, the hierarchy of needs. But of course, it does make some sense. Of course, he talks about various needs like physiological needs, safety needs, a need for love and love relationship, of, and then the need for esteem, self-esteem, and finally the need for self-actualization. For some of us, this lockdown period may be a time of self-actualization because we have all the rest of the needs fulfilled. But imagine the people for the for, for people who are struggling to eat; they don't have physiological needs being fulfilled. What a struggle they will be going through. You and I will not be able to understand this. Only when we are forced into a situation where we need to go and ask, beg for a meal. It, it did happen also for people, especially during this Holocaust. Those people who really lived a very noble life, a very lucrative life, they had to go through this uh, hard reality. And of course, we are, we are still worried about some of this... Uh, some of these little issues, I don't know now, I don't have much of internet connectivity I, uh, and we are still grumbling about the taste of food and things like that. But people are going through real issues. And when we are pushed to this rock bottom of our life, we enter into this despair. And that is where we start thinking of ending our own lives. And we come out with beautiful lectures saying, you need to fight hard, you need to have this courage. Yes, it's all fine. But my dear friends, the whole of the first reading talks about the frailty, the weakness, the vulnerability of human life. Jeremiah hit the rock bottom. He didn't even want to live. He was in despair. And today, this whole pandemic is pushing us to this hard reality. We are nothing. We are so scared of this invisible virus. And we don't know what, what could happen in the future. We are not able to trust anyone. We are scared to touch. That's why we, we were even making comments saying, I think we need to follow Don Bosco's rule quite seriously because Don Bosco always uh, in our seminary days gave us two rules. One is rule of touch and rule of silence. Of course, rule of silence after night prayers. We are not supposed to talk till the following day morning breakfast which some of us were still breaking that rule, which simply means don't talk unnecessarily, keep your mouth shut. Rule of touch, don't unnecessarily touch people. We have come to that kind of a situation. So what is the solution? We are not able to find any solution. When we don't have a solution, when we are pushed to this rock bottom, that is where the whole hope takes meaning. What is hope? It is not, you no. Know, for hope, we really need God. Only God can bring solution to this problem. That is hope. That is why, my dear friends, if we don't develop a strong relationship with God, any of this issue, any of these five uh, uh, basic needs, if we are not able to get, get it fulfilled, we will be pushed into depression. We are worried about, I, am not, I don't have the qualification, I am not given appreciation, I am not given recognition. We are worried about these needs. People are struggling, they are not able to even have a one, one square meal. Hope is a time where you really don't know what to do next. And that is where the whole reality of God comes in. 
for hope we need God. And hoping in God simply means with all these issues, I know there is no solution for it. I don't know, we are clueless about the whole thing, but still we believe that He will give us a solution. People who have this strong hope in God, with all the despair, with all the depression, they still will move forward. That is what martyrs did. I was pretty uh, inspired by, uh, by reading about uh, Claritian martyrs, 51 of them. And of course, uh, Pope John Paul II, 1992, he, he, he beatified almost 120 martyrs who died in the Spanish Civil War. And among the 120 whom he beatified, 51 were from one particular seminary who were completely taken and the superiors were shot in front of the seminarians and the rest of them were shot in various batches. And you should see the way they went in to die. Dear friends, for us we think with death everything gets over. We hope, we hope, we hope, we pray for a person's recovery and if we lose that person, we think with that hope gets over. No. Death can never say with this hope is uh, hope comes to an end. No. Even after death, we need to have hope. And for all these difficult situations, with, for all our despair, for all our depression, for all what Jeremiah went through, for all our lamentations, we have the solution in the gospel today. Beautiful gospel on providence, divine providence. He says, Jesus says, even your hair on your head is counted. It is again said, for an average human being, we can have up to 90,000 hair or 1,20,000, 120,000 or even it can even go up to 150,000 hair. Of course, for some of us, may not be so much. But everything is counted. Nothing happens to us without his knowledge. Of course, we fight with them, saying, why do you allow all this? With all the difficulty that we go through, even to the point of death, there is a plan of God. We still need to hope in God. So gospel today says, trust in the divine providence. Our human soul is much more worthier than sparrows, for which with, with one penny they could buy a couple of sparrows. But our human soul is much more important and significant for God. Everything that we do, everything that, that is happening within us, God knows it. And today, more and more, the world is becoming very negative. We are losing hope. And you know why most of the people who are even affected by this COVID-19, they die because of fear. The moment you are diagnosed with this, uh, with this virus, people think they are going to die. Of course, it's difficult to take this. But people you know, who, who, who come out of it, those who fight. Those who fight with hope. That is why this fear, whenever we go through this situation of depression, despair, we are overpowered with this fear. This fear is very dangerous, my dear friends. This can actually, the, 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 it is fear that kills us. That's why when these youngsters come and ask us for a bit of counseling, especially youngsters come and ask for, ask for suggestions only when it comes to love relationship. And most of these fellows come and say, Father, I think I'm losing this girl. Father, I'm losing my boyfriend. I think I'm losing him. I may not get him. I'm really scared. I'm really scared. I'm really scared. I used to tell him, your fear, your fear will take that person away. You fear so much of losing someone and you start acting weird and your acting weird will make that person to go away faster. And finally, it is not the person, the other person was ditched you. It is your fear that has ditched you. After that, don't blame the other person saying, he or she cheated me, they ditched me. It is not he or she who has cheated you. It is your fear which has ditched you. And who, who has this fear so much? Those who do not hope in God. Those who do not have faith in God. So my dear friends, during this uh, difficult times, all of us are going through, it's very easy to preach like this. It's very easy, easy to uh, talk to people. But when it comes to our personal life, it hits us, hits us hard even to the point of death. But we shouldn't, for Christians, death is not, not an end. Today, as this whole world is suffering with fear, we don't have any solutions as of now, unless the curative vaccines are found out. We pray that the Lord may inspire some of our scientists to come out with the solution. 
But till then, let us not get overpowered with this fear, which is a much more bigger virus that will actually make us to lose this battling spirit. And let's also pray that we may develop this positivity. Positivity is nothing but hope in God. This hope is nothing but come what may, God will not let me down. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for various intentions. Join with me. Let's pray for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and the Catholic Church, that it may be the salt and light of the world, may intervene at this time when the whole globe is going through the crisis, that the Church may be relevant for every one of them. Let's also pray for our bishops, various dioceses, Let's pray for the nations and the leaders who govern the nations that the Lord may bless them with wisdom to make the right decisions for the good of the people. Let us pray in a very special way for all the people who are afflicted, and the people who are affected by COVID-19, that the good Lord may restore their good health. Let's also pray for every family, that the Lord may bless each and every one of them. In a very special way, let's pray for each and every one of you who are participating in this Mass, that the Lord's protection may be on every one of you. May He grant you all the graces that you stand in need of. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as a Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and George Anthony Sam, your bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to our Father. In the words our Saviour gave us, Our Father in heaven, Holy be your name. Your kingdom come, Your will be done, On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you in my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen Dear friends i would like to extend my gratitude and thank each and every one of you for your constant support some of you regularly leave a comment in the youtube itself directly which actually gives us a lot of support and encouragement and keep supporting us and some of you also send in the personal number and slowly we have grown as a family and it is also growing bigger and bigger to give glory to god that is primarily that is the reason why we have began this ministry it is to bring each of us one step closer to god if that is happening i think the the whole purpose is uh, it's it's it, the whole ministry is going in the right uh, direction i thank you so much for your constant support and prayers i also like to thank my little team uh, the young team as i used to be also telling in the beginning still this uh, young fellows are very consistent and they're able to contribute in spite of uh, it's pretty hard sometimes so keeping awake the whole night and still doing it regularly on every day basis and some of you also supported in various ways thank you every i thank everyone for also uh, contributing in whatever way possible to this um, youngsters as well as to this whole of this ministry continue to uh, support us as part of uh, part of a little homework for this sunday i think last sunday i did not give homework I'd like to leave a homework for this sunday dear friends a lot of people are living in despair in depression and someone would be trying to reach us for some reason which we may not be attending the phone call or not talking to them or some way or other we might be avoiding because we might think that they are pretty nuisance but as part of homework people who are needing us or looking for us let's spend at least 5 minutes of our time this week and talk to them and spend some little more time and give them a little bit of hope and assurance and that will make the whole liturgy meaningful god bless let's stand for the final blessing let us pray renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your son We ask of your mercy O Lord that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord Amen The Lord be with you May almighty God bless you the Father Son and the Holy Spirit Go in peace the mass is ended